welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 classic Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for Cheese Chasers and with me today to eat some more cheese is my good friend Essie McPeter. Say hi. Ugh. Ugh. You're right, you don't Too like cheese. cheese. <laughs> nope, have not had this stuff in a very long time. I'm the opposite, I love cheese. So as mentioned, this is Cheese Chasers, released on the 25th of August 1951. It had a blue ribbon reissue sometime in 1960. It's the 628th in the series and it's directed by Chuck Jones. You can find this on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 2 DVD set and on the Looney Tunes Mouse Chronicles DVD or Blu-ray set mm -hmm. as well. Take your pick. The cartoon looks very nice on either set. So in case you haven't seen this one, I can't show you the full thing here due to copyright on YouTube, but essentially, well, Hubie and Birdie go on a cheese bender, basically, at the <laughs> Hunker Cheese Company. I love that. <laughs> and they just decide, yeah, they just don't want to live anymore and they try to get Claude Cat to eat him but Claude Cat thinks something's fishy is going on and doesn't want to eat him even despite their insistence and later on yeah we see the bulldog as we'll discuss later on as well so it's mm -hmm. it's not it's another dark tale by the masters of dark humor you know Mark Maltese mm -hmm. and Chuck Jones <laughs> but trivia wise just a few things to get out of the way now this is actually the final Hubie and Birdie short, and it's interesting that this year is yet another year where we've got the final shorts of a few characters. You and I already mentioned that we discussed mm -hmm. the final Charlie Dog short, and soon will be the final Three Bears short, not long after this one. Last year of the 1950, we had the last Inky short. So this is the transition period for Chuck Jones. So his older secondary characters mm -hmm. are out the door, now we're going to see the newer secondary characters. We've got, of course, Pepe Le Pew, and we've got um, we have more Roadrunner shorts. We'll have Sam. Wouldn't this be considered his third batch of secondary? Because there was, of course, the Curious Pups and Sniffles, but we'll be a the... bit of a rotating cast, I guess. Exactly. So uh, you, you can understand why Pepe Le Pew continued, because the first one won the Oscar and, and so on. So Yeah, yeah. The Roadrunners were easy to make, they kept on budget, and they were fascinating, I guess, to audiences. The first one did so well that yeah. as of 1952, we'll start seeing them way more frequently, and yeah. we'll see some Sam and Wolf shorts, we'll see Coyote and Bugs Bunny teamed up, we'll see all sorts of different yeah, things this by is, Chuck this Jones. This is the year of the second Roadrunner, Beep Beep, I believe, right? No, 52. That one also marks the transition, because that one's the, really the one that proves it for it to work as a series. Exactly. Two other bits of trivia from this specific short. So when Claude Cat puts on the hat, when he's reading the Mental Diseases book, so he's acting like Napoleon, so he does that pose, and that's like the Napoleon delusion, and that's just a common trope that they mm -hmm. use a lot, that people are insane because they think there's someone else, and they, for some reason, use Napoleon a lot. You'll see it at the end of Porky in Egypt, mm -hmm. when Porky goes insane. So it's it was a trope that's used quite a bit, and still used in some cartoons today. I think Futurama even did it once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... And the saying, there is something rotten in Denmark, that comes from Hamlet, Act 1, Scene mm -hmm. 4, about there being something rotten in the state of Denmark. So for you Shakespearean fans, yes, I know what it is. I don't particularly enjoy Shakespeare myself, but I was forced to study it. This is the first time where Shakespeare is actually being useful in my life, where I can figure <laughs> out where some of these things actually come from. But I still do not like Shakespeare. I think his work... Something yeah. rotten with Shakespeare. Yeah, I just don't care for it. And I know some of you Shakespeare fans are probably screaming, but... And hey, if you're a Shakespeare fan and you think I'm wrong in my opinion, yeah, go nuts. You can tell me why I'm wrong. But we're not talking about Shakespeare anymore. Let's talk about this <laughs> wonderful wonderful shorts i mean if this had to be the last hubie and birdie short they certainly go out with a bang don't they yeah i really wish they did more of them but then i feel like they would have worn their stay it's like short short but sweet like you know you had other series like you know three bears shorts they only did five but they're all top notch the pebble pews definitely feel like they wear out their welcome and one thing i don't recommend if you buy that pebble pew set don't watch them all in a row like I did. They blend together so badly. It's not good. It's like my job where they play the same songs at the same time every day. If you're watching Pepe Le Pew's amongst other shorts, they're fine. You can watch it the different ones mm -hmm. every so often and admire artistry and that sort of stuff. But those shorts feel way more restrictive. Whereas this one, there's a lot more you could do with this concept of two mice just tormenting this uh, poor neurotic cat who has a brilliant voice here by Mel Blanc. I think the voice here here for Claude is probably my favorite. I must be dreaming. Yeah, that's it. I'm dreaming. 
<laughs> so like the Meadows mm -hmm. type voice from earlier on, I um, mean, in the first Hebrew version. Meadows. Meadows. I yeah, can't like it, that. But yeah. Plot definitely really works with that voice because again, it's works with a very neurotic personality. Exactly. And of course, I'll just also point out that Mel Blanc does Hubie and Stan Freeberg does Bertie. So, and of course, Stan Freeberg's not credited, as is the case with all the Warner Brothers shorts around this particular time. Another thing as well, if this short feels familiar to you, it might have been you've seen a Frizz Freeling short called Life with Feathers, mm -hmm. where there was a bird trying to get Sylvester to eat it. Like, it was like a love bird, I believe. Um, yeah, a love bird who was trying to commit suicide, but Sylvester thinks he's been poisoned. Here, they don't directly say that Hubie and Birdie are implied to be poisoned. Again, Claude isn't very much sure why they want him to eat them. It's like, there must be something wrong with these mice for me to eat them. It's definitely that mm -hmm. sort of thing, and I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it works a little better here than in Life with Feathers because it doesn't take the time for Sylvester to constantly go, you've been poisoned. But let's look at the beginning. I think we've all been on food benders at some point where like, we might be at a party, we eat maybe a bit too much, or mm -hmm. it's like there's so much good food and you just don't want to eat ever again. And I'm sure we've all been there. So definitely let me know in the comments if you've been on a bit of a food bender. Mm -hmm. I got to point out with Claude again, the animation. At this point, Chuck is going full on with his more limited style animation, but strong poses, and of course, mm -hmm. just move, like moving the eyeballs around and just the looks of disbelief. Mm -hmm. Why are these mice wanting me to eat, eat you know, me to eat them? It's just incredible. I, yeah, I suppose Chuck wasn't as, I guess, full as, say, someone like McKimson, who used animation a lot more, but Jones really is perfecting his balance of posing and pantomime while using strong action it's a really good blend especially when the characters are trying to show their thoughts in a very comedic way and trying to react because when the characters react it isn't like an avery where it's over the top here it's a lot more subtle because with of course the pantomime i just think it's amazing mm -hmm. and yeah of course chuck will continue doing this sort of stuff more and more especially as the budgets go less and less it works to his advantage because it's cost less to animate this way as mm -hmm. opposed to the old Avery or Clampett style. Yeah, definitely it works well here. I'm sure even at this time, because of course Avery and Clampett did adopt to limited animation later in their careers. And I'm sure Clampett would have if he had stayed with Warner, but it does show greatly how Jones already had a working system where he could do these things and do them in budget. Because again, even in the 40s, he was doing this and doing much limited stuff with the background and his way of posing and smearing. I think the big thing for me, and I'm assuming it's probably the same for you too, is the final scenes with the bulldog that looks like Mark Antony, but talks with his mm -hmm. accent, it just, which is weird because I've seen Feed the Kitty so many times that hearing him actually talk in this way mm -hmm. just sounds weird. <laughs> hey, you're mice, right? Right. And, and, and mice, they eat cheese, right? Cheese? Yeah! Don't mention that way! That's why I like this short. You think the whole short's going to be basically, oh yeah, it's just going to be Hubie and Birdie tormenting this cat and mm -hmm. there'll be a punchline, see you later. But no, they add to it in the last act in a way you don't expect. Mm -hmm. They bring another character into it. Claude now wants to be eaten because mm -hmm. he's just doesn't want yeah, to eat mice anymore. It isn't really even tormented. They genuinely want to be eaten. It's more, again, just creating the neurotsy rather than expanding on it like they did in previous shorts where mm. Claude is much more established as being generally neurotic. This time he develops it on and on as he just can't explain why they want him to eat them so badly and it to the point where it sours his taste in eating mice. Exactly. And just the disbelief on the dog, <sighs> the animation that scene of his just expressions when yeah. he's trying to figure out, okay, cats eat mice, right? No. And he's just that disbelief is just so... He just can't explain what happened, and Hubie and Birdie don't even offer why they won't eat cheese, why it scares them. Exactly. It's all the misunderstandings that leads to a fantastic ending where the, the dog is like, well, in cartoon logic, nothing eats dogs, so it's the dog catcher. So he runs after yeah. the dog catcher. <laughs> it happens to be driving yeah. past conveniently, but hey, it works for the short. I Before really think that that final part of... It just don't add up! I think that's by Lloyd Vaughn. Lloyd Vaughn started sometime in like 47, 48 with Jones. And after the shutdown, he would go into advertising. I think this is probably his most famous piece of work. Just that whole, it just don't add up. He definitely had a bit more of a bouncier take. He definitely took more with getting the smears out of from pose to pose. 
and it, and it created a lot more bouncier look than, say, someone like Ken Harris. I also want to point out that adding machine, just for you younger <laughs> folks, yes, that's how accountants used to add things for their clients. They're basically really big calculators that were able to print on paper. Mm-hmm. So that's something just for you guys in case you're wondering what's that machine that he's got, mm-hmm. you know, and it's an Acme device that actually works. So go figure. And now my good friend John has sent me his thoughts on cheese chasers. So take it away, John. Cheese! Yeah! Don't mention that word! Well, it's me again, and today I'll be talking about cheese chasers. And we'll first give my quick thoughts on the cartoon, and like when I did on A Hound for Trouble for Charlie Dog, I'll give a small retrospective on Huey and Birdie. So first of all, I really love this cartoon. It's a pretty funny one, very solid gangs, I always enjoy Huey and Birdie, and also Cold Cat. And yeah, it was it's a pretty funny conclusion to the career on Hubie and Birdie. I liked it that even if it's a little bit sad that it was the last cartoon and Jones decided to no longer use them. You know, by this time Jones retired many of his characters that really helped him shape in comedy. He already retired Charlie Dog and the Freebirds are gonna be next. But yeah, I wish we had seen more of Hubie and Birdie. They had a lot of potential. So one thing with this cartoon in specific is about how dark and somewhat disturbing the whole concept of the short it is. After all, the main part of the short is that almost all the three main characters, Hubie, Birdie and Codcat, want to end their lives for different reasons. And one of the highlights of this cartoon is obviously the finale, when, you know, Codcat is going through the with the dog, he punches the dog and eventually the dog decides to try to figure out a solution, a whole thing and, and it's a very hilarious scene. So the dog is with a typewriter and we see a uh, exhibit A, B, C and eventually the dog takes the paper and looks at Cameron and says It just don't add up! I really love that small scene and the facial expressions the dog does. Another thing is that this cartoon has some of the funniest facial expressions on any Jones cartoons. If there's something with Cod Cat and Every time he's in any Chuck Jones short, it's a very expressive character. The little moments where if you pause, you can see how his pupils will be either very expanded or very small. And they do it also with the dog. Like when the dog first reacts about the whole thing with Quad Cat, that's not wanting to eat them, Hubie and Birdie. And Hubie and Birdie want to get eaten alive by Quad Cat. Or when the mouse are asked, but you don't want to eat cheese, and they go, cheese? Ah! Yeah, that's pretty funny. Even the cartoon also ends with the dog also joining that madness and wanting the dog catcher to catch him so he doesn't have to deal with both Claude or Hubie and Birdie. In an overall conclusion, this is a funny short, but also a bit of a dark tone. It's a little bit a darker tone that I w- you will see in more modern tunes like Ren Stimpy or, or you know, some of the more edgier 90s shows. And now I would like to give a small retrospective on Hubie and Birdie. Overall, these are two characters that I really love, and as mentioned, I wish they had more appearances. But yeah, all their six cartoons, I really enjoyed them. Uh, the Aristocat is obviously among my favorite cartoons of the early 40s. Not only has amazing backgrounds, but also it's a solid introduction to the characters. A lot of funny, memorable scenes over there. Uh, Rowley Squeaking, which is the second one, has, it's also among my favorites of the 40s. A lot of funny lines in there and some smart gags thrown in there. Then there is House Hunting Mice, which is just a remake of a previous Jones short, Dog Gone Modern. And I really enjoyed a little bit that short. It might be a little bit weak in gags, but I don't know, I really enjoyed the animation there and the backgrounds. Then Mouse Records is obviously my favorite of the Hubie and Birdie bunch. Not only is their only Oscar nominee, but it's possibly the best one. Plus, it introduced Cod Cat to the mix. And then there is Hypondriacat, another short I remember watching as a kid because of the first Golden Collections. And that one was pretty fine. As for this one, what I mentioned, a really funny short, somewhat a little bit dark and disturbing in terms of the main gag in the entire short, you know. But I enjoy it. I remember watching also as a kid Cheese Chasers and liking it. An overall good career for Hubie and Birdie. And just like Charlie Dog, they also made appearances years later in other Looney Tunes media. For example, they were, I think, on the Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries. They were also in the first Space Jam movie, where I think it was Birdie, the one who took the microphone and changed to a deep voice. But similar to Charlie Dog, they also have returned on Looney Tunes cartoons with a new animated short, which is about them dealing with Claude wanting to steal cheese in a 
and Kotka trying to stop them and it's it's a pretty funny one it's almost like a more modernized version of mouse records but yeah it's pretty fun to see Hubie and Birdie back in there alongside quad cat in the new shore especially after not having seen them for many years in the golden age ones but yeah this is all that I have to say about cheese chasers a pretty funny disturbing cartoon and that's all my part that I have for it today I'll see you guys in another review in terms of a rating, this one gets about, oh, I'm just tossing between eight and a half and nine. I think it's really, really good. I think what makes it a higher score for me was just how it just adds the bulldog at the end. I think if it didn't, mm -hmm. I would have maybe given it a little bit lower score, but it just adds it. This is what Disney would have called plussing. That final bit pluses this cartoon. Yeah. So, I, you know Yeah, what? the dog adds a lot more when, again, Claude really is ready to give up and again the dog has to take matters into his own hands but then ends up neurotic himself and again it would have been too much if they had added the dog catcher and sent it out of animal realms yeah it, it you really, know what let's give it a nine i'll give it a yeah nine. I, i'm gonna give it a nine too it's definitely one of the greatest from this period i just really wish chuck did more hubie and birdie cartoons i really wish he did because again it's a much again this one shows that he still had a lot more going especially if they had used the Mark Anthony dog a bit more. Exactly. Whose design gets at least reused into a mm -hmm. brilliant cartoon that I hope to cover when I'm, what, mm -hmm. 50, 58 years old or something at the rate I'm going with these things. But anyway, <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. But that'll do it for this one. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for watching. And until next time, take care. That's all, folks. Hey, wait for me. Wait for baby. Hey, wait for me. <laughs>